seconds. Okay. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining me here in this uh, Florida Power Shell User Group meeting. Uh, it says, oh my, it was supposed to be the meeting for the 929, but uh, my system was upgraded and suffered a, a little bug where if you're not attached to a domain controller, uh, you can log in. So I have to move this meeting from the 9th, uh, from last week, the 929, 2016, to today. So welcome back. Um, sorry for all the issues I had last week, and now we're here live. And we're going to look into Windows 10, Bash, Linux Subsystem, and PowerShell. Now, this is more like a get-you-going session, okay? Uh, so I'm going to be uh, giving you a lot of tips. Uh, I have a text file with all the stuff that I do to make this thing work, okay? And besides the fact, I have a blog uh, which I already have some tips on the workaround and how to make your, or how you can use PowerShell within your uh, Windows 10 Bash Linux system, okay? All right, so let's get this thing going. My contact information, uh, if you care to write it down, I'm always available, send me an email, uh, and all my information is there. And yes, I was the guy with the shark. Yes, I made it to Shark Week. Uh, so feel free to contact me, I'm always available. All right, also, join in the Microsoft Community um, uh, portal. It's available for all uh, IT professionals, and um, I started interacting with it and posting some stuff on uh, PowerShell Core um, for Linux. And, of course, PowerShell Core 6.0 uh, Alpha is the one that's coming out, that is, is right now available for download. Right now, currently, it's in version 11, so uh, it's still alpha, right? But you can download, work with it, you can, you know, you can contribute to the, um, uh, to the success of an improvement of this uh, upcoming product. Again, I'm not a Linux expert, okay? But I'm loving what I'm doing with Linux. I finally got an opportunity to have a purpose why I want to use Linux. And this is what I'm showing here right now is uh, uh, all what I've learned. And, uh, and this is a non it is not stop. It's not gonna stop, okay? So this is what I'm very excited about this. Uh, we've spent many years in, in working with mainframes and, and also Windows environment and finally got a chance to get my hands dirty with Linux. And there's a lot of information out there about it. Uh, okay, so this is more like what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we want to talk about Bash how to get it, what you can do with it, uh, reset. One of the best thing about Bash in Windows is if it didn't work, you can reinitialize that, that Bash and put it back and start building up again. This is the good thing. And you don't have to do any, uh, how do you call it, like without your Windows 10 being suffering to a point of a crash or rebuild Windows 10. No, it's very simple. To, to uninstall and reinstall, put your user back in, password, and the rest is just a matter of understanding how you load your packages, you know, your Linux packages to it. So we're gonna go through that. Uh, the demo is very, very intensive. I'm gonna be showing uh, 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 some, some things, and especially how can you make PowerShell work in your Windows Bash. I love this picture, you know. This is okay. Now we got Windows PowerShell and now versus Windows PowerShell open source. Uh, okay, it's not against or versus, you know, but it, 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 it's going to be eventually in the long term. I mean, down the line, definitely that piece of the core, I would expect that will be integrated into the Windows PowerShell, you know, but we'll see how that direction goes. But then, yes. You got Linux, Max, Windows, all shaking hands to say how kumbaya. All right, we'll go for it. All right, uh, then here we got some information about uh, Windows and PowerShell, some things uh, you want to take advantage of the links and videos. And um, it, it is a big deal, okay? Now that you're, especially your system administrator who used to work with Windows, and eventually now you got to help manage the Linux system or Macintoshes. All right, here it is, man. 
boom, PowerShell Open Source will help you accomplish that task at hand. Okay. Uh, this is just a screen that I added on from the previous uh, session, you know, showing an example how Windows PowerShell looks like and how the uh, uh, PowerShell Core, um, as a matter of fact, you have different names for PowerShell Core, PowerShell Open Source, PowerShell Core, it's still going to be PowerShell. Uh, the trademark for Microsoft will be Windows PowerShell and the open source will be known as PowerShell. So that's kind of like the difference going into right now. Uh, I showed the slide before. This is my, my Linux environment. Not the current machine I'm on. I'm on a Windows machine, but the, the, this uh, laptop is connected to uh, as a work group through my uh, to my Windows Linux Ubuntu, which is now 16.04, and uh, and of course I have uh, finally got loaded Windows 10 on it, which is the one I'm going to be re remoting to. And, and, you know, all the things that you want to link, uh, get into is understanding Python and, and Windows Core for Windows as well as uh, um, PowerShell code for, for Linux. And uh, unfortunately, I'm going to give you the heads up, uh, Bash, I think it's because it resides on the same place as Windows. Visual Studio Code, uh, I almost got it to work. It's just it doesn't want to come up the GUI. So there's something still. And of course, this is just a work in process. So, so this is very, very interesting. <clears throat> this is just a screen screen of, of my Linux environment, which I love right now because, I mean, it's a, it is an example of a machine that mainly on Windows, the machine is too slow. And then when you put a Linux system, it, 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 it uses all the resources in such a way that the machine doesn't feel uh, that uh, slow anymore. So, uh, and you have Visual Studio uh, Code working on it. You have um, a Visual Box with you can build your uh, virtual machines, and of course now you can open the terminal on Linux and type PowerShell and wor work with PowerShell. <clears throat> and of course, uh, uh, as a from a Windows machine, you want to connect remotely to a Linux machine. In this case, it's a, it's a desktop you're connecting to. It's a remote desktop. So uh, uh, in this case, how to use the uh, X Ubuntu desktop in order to have to change the desktop. Instead of the uh, Ubuntu Unity, I had to install the Ubuntu, uh, the X Ubuntu desktop in order to make the 2D uh, rendering for my remote desktop to work. And it's an example that it's, it works very well. I'm going to show you also uh, one of demo. Um, in one occasion, I want to mention that um, there is a product out there in Linux that you can use with your Skype for business. Uh, it's going to be a little pricey because for each desktop, uh, for, for each user, you got to pay $45. But the, the nicest thing is that you can connect your Linux machine to, uh, to your Skype for business. That was very, very impressive. So I eventually going to do a, a, a special meeting using only uh, uh, the sky for Linux. So keep an eye on that because that way you can I can share my desktop and you can see what I'm doing on my Linux environment all all through this uh, all through the uh, sky for business. So pay attention to to that one. It's going to come sometime next year. It's an example how it looks like uh, the sky sky for Skype for business. And this is how uh, uh, on my side of, you know, on the side of the user connecting to a Linux machine, how it's going to look like. This is amazing. I mean, it's a very great product. Uh, and then there's an example of uh, using uh, Visual Studio Code for cross-platform, how to get the download. And then, of course, you have distribution for Windows and, and Linux machine, totally free. And whatever you do on, on the Windows side, just with a little tweak, you can work on the on the Linux with uh, Visual Studio Code. This is a good example with the code of how, how to make it work. It's a, it's a very interesting product. And right now, we're going to dive into the demo. Okay. So let me just go ahead and get this thing out of here. Ah, and then I'm going to do my cheap cheap here. Is it? Here it is. All right. Okay. So, 
let it put it here on this side here. Okay. First of all, if you don't have Bash installed yet, you got to go to Control Panel. And basically, uh, if you right click here on the Windows flag and go to Programs and Features and install the program, for, uh, not here, uh, turn Windows feature on and off. And then you scroll down, and you'll find you'll find a Windows subsystem for Linux beta. You check that up, and this is what uh, uh, it will install Bash in your in your Windows. Uh, the good thing about this is something happened on your installation, something you know like you messed up Bash or anything. You can do the following command line. LX run uninstall dash full. That's it. That command line at the DOS or PowerShell command line, you run that, that line and it will clear your bash subsystem. Uh, I realize that bash updated to Ubuntu 16.04 recently, but I realized on my system when I did the uninstall and reinstall, it was still loading the previous version. So make sure that go back in your control panel and uncheck to completely uninstall so when you go back and install it back it will refresh with the latest version of Ubuntu which right now is Ubuntu 16.04 I'll show you soon uh, on the uh, uh, on the console and then of course to install back a simple line LX run slash uninstall this is the best way to install it um, at a command line because what it does is it will brief it will ask you for your user ID and password at that bash level okay and then you will you it will, you will rebuild it again okay and when you get installed and everything you get this icon bash on ubuntu but then again you can open windows uh windows powershell console and you can type bash and you can open it which i'm going to do that now uh let's say i'm going to open let me open this one Windows and I'm do bash and you see the prompt change to the, the bash user ID with machine name mount C Windows system 32 you're in the bash right now in the bash up system now all right the IR you see all the file gets loaded cancel that so you have all the and then you can also navigate through the uh, bash system this is because I already know this so we're going to go to my home slash maxd and uh, change my directory dir and you see you want to change the uh, the prompt to a more readable size go to properties then you're going to do font 16 and here let's change the layout the change instead of 50 put 38 click keep OK and that's a little more sizable and readable okay now this is just the bash subsystem now after you get it after you install uh, bash and you add the prompt right now there's some things you might want to do for setting the rest of the stuff up so you want a little more information about bash some documentation is available through Microsoft I provided here uh, this is the uh, Windows System Linux uh, doc document. You can go ahead and go to that link there. Uh, and most important, we're talking Windows here and Bash, right? You might want to take advantage, download this this application. It's a X server. This is what allow you to open from your Linux install application to open your Linux GUI apps. Okay, and so you install this in Windows, uh, go through the process, and, and, and we're going to look at this in, in a little bit. You wonder what kind of version of Bash you're using. You can run this, this command here, cat, etc. cetera, uh, issue. It's the simplest way to do it. So at the prompt, the other side prompt, which is the user prompt, cat, slash, et cetera, et cetera, slash, issue. And they show you that my latest bash is on is based on Ubuntu 16.04.1. Okay, 
Uh, previously, I had a very kind of stable to a point system with the 1404, but they did this uh, update recently during during uh, last month, in the, f in the last few weeks of last month. So this is where we're at right now. Okay. All right. So going through the process here, there's a couple things you might want to uh, memorize. I think John, you probably know know this already. Uh, this is running processes. Uh, and there's a couple ways to, to do it. I show everything here. Uh, that's the Linux command for checking for processes. PS. Uh, you can do PS3. It'll give you a layout of a graphical layout of what how the processes is initializing bash PS3 how it's running. And you have this other one that it's uh, more of a dynamic. Uh, I show you dynamically you know, the processes that are running. And you press escape key, and you see that it's updating when you press escape key. Okay, so now the control, I think control C will escape out of it. Yeah. Uh, you can use clear screen, CLS. Uh uh, a lie, that's an alias. I'll show you how to build that alias. Normally in Linux, you have to type the whole clear command in order to clear whatever's on the screen. Here, okay, and then as we go through, now we need to this hire. This is some recommendation of some, uh, uh, what I call it, some command to keep a, keep an eye on. Instead of IP config in Windows, is if config. Uh, if I go if config, they give me information. Uh, uh, if config, uh, because we got the S bins and code and your path. Ah, look what I found here. Now let's check on this. This is new. This is new. Now let me see here. If config cannot open. Wow. Okay. Well, I tell you what. This is a bug. This command, which you type in a Linux in, uh, environment, is supposed to give you the uh, the IP configuration, you know, or your network card and, and what IP is assigned to them. And in this case, I just discover a bug. So, all right. So that's why this is a good thing about working with Microsoft right now. This is open source. Uh, this this bash on Windows is open source. Just you can contribute for the bugs that 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 you find in in the, in the product. So this is supposed to return information is not doing it. Uh, and what I did here is I went to as a super user using uh, sudo su is it's like the administrator right uh, administrator permission privileges to, to do stuff in the machine like loading application and, and do system admin stuff. Uh, other than that when I click exit I'm back in the as a regular user mode. Uh, so that that took me by surprise. It's not supposed to have happened. Um, Okay, so that that's good. Uh, in most cases, when you create a directory, you might want to do it with a sudo um, uh, as 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 a admin right. So sudo make there. Uh, the dollar sign it means is is a a user mode prompt, uh, and so you can do rdm for delete or rmdir for delete folders or files. Uh, and one nice one is which I'm going to show you in a little bit is the Nautilus. Nautilus is the explorer. Of, of it's the Windows Explorer of Linux, okay? Uh, but I'll I'll going to show you more on that. Uh, normally, when you install application, you identify the application is is an installation package, and you normally do is by typing sudo apt-get. This is Ubuntu. If it was Red Hat, it should be yum, okay? So it will be sudo apt-get space install, and then the name of the application or or the package you're trying to install. Uh, also, you can use uh, first thing when you soon you open. If you haven't been using Bash for weeks, it's always good to do the app get update. You download all the updates for whatever application you have in your system. Uh, Ubuntu keep track of the updates, and you can do this manually uh, in any time on the week. Um, now, the, the list I'm providing here is the list of more likely. The things to get started uh, with with uh, so so you can experience uh, working with PowerShell. 
uh, and mainly what I did is I installed the Xubuntu desktop, Xterm, Screen, Firefox, so I want to have uh, 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 the purpose of this, you, you see, I cannot use my Windows Firefox or IE to download Debian's packages, that's how they call for for um, uh, installation, for uh, application installation in Linux, Debian packages. Um, you have to use a Debian product. So in this case, I use a Debian Firefox that I installed, a uh, Linux Firefox. So that way, when it download the products, download into my Linux user profile downloads folder, not the Windows downloads folder. There's a difference, okay? Because uh, uh, as soon as you try to open, you download a Debian uh, file into a Windows folder, and so you try to open with a Windows editor or Windows application that Debian file, it will not work. It, it's different. It's, one is a Windows file, one is a Linux file. So as soon as that Linux file say change to a Windows file, forget it. It it is that's it's not gonna work. And I show you this with uh, uh, writing scripts, um, screen and Xterm. Uh, external screen are application that you use for for terminal uh, one is uh, uh, it's like an internal terminal you'll you see and it works great with, with PowerShell um, I try to use uh, what I'm highlighting right now is uh, the series of applications that I install if, if I want to have uh, a full Windows version of Linux uh, GUI in on, on my Windows and uh, it, it's 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 not fully workable, but I'll, I'll I'll show you the possibilities with it. But it's practical for individuals Windows, so that's a, that's why I recommend it to install the. This only works if you have installed the uh, X main, which is the X server for 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 Windows. And um, we're getting closer to to have that demo. Uh, so this section here, this particular, you know what? Let me separate this thing here. Let me make it better. Uh, because this section here, this section here, what it does is for your full Windows uh, uh, Linux GUI on your Windows, uh, and that's the that's the purpose of that section there. Uh, now, in Windows, if you open if you open Windows Explorer, and I already did this before, so let me just go ahead and uh, uh, let me go ahead and do this and bring him down here. And this will be your profile, your Linux user profile when you set up Bash with a user ID. In this game, my user ID is Max T. And this is what it, it gets built. Okay. Uh, this is how you can find it using your Windows Explorer. Okay. And it all is on, on inside this X, LXXS for having Linux subsystem. Okay, this is this is how it's structured. This is how you find it, and I provided the link in here. Okay, uh, the bin is where you can create shell scripts that run automatically from your Windows uh, Bash. Okay, and then below is just an example of of a uh, which I think I just wrote this one. They have to be home. Sorry for this. Home. Um, your name, and just to point into a folder that I created named PowerShell. Okay. Uh, now, inside Linux, your, your Windows subsist, uh, your Windows files are under a mount and the letter C. And then this is the uh, uh, how do you navigate? Use the uh, the forward slash instead of the backslash slash. And you can see in Linux, there's no particular uh, drive letter okay um, so that's that about that and then here uh, this installation to run okay now below here this is the PowerShell section here this is the PowerShell section this is all the steps you need to do only this domain step to download that version of PowerShell Core Linux for your Bash, your Windows Bash. It's a Debian. You see, it's the Debian. 
it's a Debian package. Uh, this is the latest version, 11, Alpha 11, 6, 600 Alpha 11 is the latest version now. It will fail. That's why they have the next, uh, the next command, sudo app get install f, because it will fail. This will fix it. If you need to uninstall PowerShell, then you can also run the uh, sudo app get remove PowerShell. And you ever wonder where's PowerShell store at on your Linux environment, on your Bash environment, and Linux is located on the user local bin. And realize it is there's no exe in Linux. Okay, there's no exe in Linux. All right. So as we move forward, this is all build, build up, build up. I got I got my application loaded. I got PowerShell loaded. Uh, I know what my directories uh, in Windows and, and Linux uh, where PowerShell reside. And now we're going to go part of the GUI side, the Linux GUI side on Windows. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, John. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Let me let me try that. Just, uh, let's take a. Sorry, I was not paying attention to the uh, uh, to the chat room. I'm involved here. Okay. So you want me to try slash s bin slash s maybe maybe you're totally right. But why John have some little experience, uh, some experience in Linux? I uh, have them to let me know if anything. Ah, uh, no. You see, this is the thing. There's something going on. Uh, uh, this I gotta. This is the thing I have to write about. You know. This is a. This is this is a tool that's supposed to work. I know for that for a fact. Can remember if on the previous version if it was working. I think it was working, but I could be wrong. Okay. As a matter of fact, I have to check into the uh, uh, open source GitHub uh, on DoDSL to see if, it's, if it's somebody have already told about this. So it's a good search for that. All right, so getting back in here. So I already have my X window loaded, and let me move this out of the way so I can show you the uh, board on this. Uh, and then we got, uh, let me resize this a little smaller. Okay, as soon as you load the X-Ming application in your system, you got these two icons. Normally, you need to launch first, right? So you got to go to the X server launch. In this case, I already have multiple windows. For each PowerShell console, you open and run a batch script that might have a GUI, then it will open a GUI window. And to uh, show that, let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, what we're doing here. Uh, first of all, because you don't have this thing on your bash src, which is your auto sec file, auto sec file in Linux. And I'm going to do this clear screen. And I'm going to do paste. This command line is what enables you to run a, and on this command line set the next the GUI application to run in a X window on your Windows uh, application. So that's set it up and then I will do fire. This might fail. This might fail. Normally in a Linux environment this will work, but this will fail. We'll show you what happened. Okay, you can uh, okay so you see this right? It didn't work, right? It didn't work because what? I haven't finished setting this thing up yet, right? So I'm going to make sure it's all run through. Just accept the defaults. And now I can do Firefox again. This this will still fail anyway, but I want the message to come up. And it's telling me missing profile. So Bash have something on the latest version that apparently is not recognizing your, your, your user profile. So something's still incomplete. This is a bug. I have to... Come on, and this is just a recent update. So, but if I do sudo Firefox, now this will work. And here is my and here is my Firefox running from the Linux environment. And then it look look at this. If I do this. I was already in a Visual Studio Code page. And what I wanted to show is that it has connectivity. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, 
you see you see my comment that's awesome yeah 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 no that that, that. I, I mean if, if you see behind the scene on 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 what he's trying to do okay if i if i do this you see I have all my other links in there uh if i do vs code enter right i'm going to search for that i'm going to kill this one here And it's supposed to bring me all the query for my for my stuff in here, but at least something is not working for me. You see here, as you see, everything is. As you see behind the scene, there's there's some things going on behind the scene. I say, oh man, this is gonna crash or something. But uh, 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 you know, this is for test purpose at least. You know, it 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 does. I mean, it have worked for me. So uh, I've ignored those those errors, but right now I don't know if maybe because I I changed connection or something, but it's supposed to bring me. Come on, man! If I do this, refresh my screen. So you see, at least it it, it can bring the the page up, but uh, this I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna do Control C in here. There you go, it releases, so let me just do a restart the system here for a second. I do bash uh, sudo firefox. I'm not giving up that easy. Firefox. There you go, that's what's supposed to come up. Okay, and now you see, sometimes you just have to restart thing. Hopefully, hopefully it will go through, right? So that's one way. But then, let's do this now because that that uh, that bash session is controlling my Firefox. I'd open another session here, so I could do something like uh, bash uh, enter, and then I'm gonna do. And unfortunately, I have to work with sudo in order to open my my applications. Uh, G edit, which is the editor. And that is out of the way. And I have my editor running here. And let's say, okay, test uh, script, okay. This file is not there. All right, so let's do this other one here. This is a file that I, that I created in, in Bash. It's to open from X terminal directly into Windows uh, PowerShell. So you'll see that one, that sample is coming. I don't know why it's not working. I um, can tell you that. I've seen it working. It's been working, so it's a first for me on this one. But 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 you understand the, the point. Maybe because I'm using um, uh, uh, Skype and something's going on and it doesn't let in it uh, complete. But you 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 understand the point on this. Now um, let me just close this one here and close this one. Uh, let me go back. So if you saw the uh, opening the editor, opening Firefox. Uh, and then again, you create a you can create a bash file, you know, bash file in order to do the same thing, and and let's just start this thing again. You can see that happening here. Where is that at? That is a. Uh, what's the other sample going to happen here? How did you use that one? You know what? Let's you tap. You see, you do the tap, you out of completes, and that would open the same editor I was working in here. And now to, to see this one running, uh, I'm going to close this up here, and what I'm going to do is Because it is in the bin, uh, you know that that path user local bin, 
it is uh, is a standard path that whatever you script you type and save in there, you can run it from anywhere. Uh, this is not going to work unless I do sudo. And as you can see in here, we got PowerShell. We got PowerShell. Running from that. I can see here that I, uh, I can go up, down. It's perfect. Now, what's the difference? I'm going to show you now. This is, I'm going to open another session. But one thing you don't want to try in Bash, okay? You don't want to try and bash this. Bash, PowerShell. This is an error that just came out. This is new too. I uh, already, uh, already uh, documented this in GitHub. Uh, this was working before in the previous version of Bash. This is stop loading the uh, PS read, read line. But why you don't want to use PowerShell at this level? Because you do this, the IR. Oh, wait a minute. Where's wait a minute? What I'm typing? Anyone notice that? C L ah wait a minute where's my my con, my cursor keep running up see I, I I don't know where I'm at in my console do you see the difference that's why you don't want to run PowerShell just after you open Bash okay uh, I'm gonna try to do an exit here if we take it yeah let me do a clear screen better. Awesome. So now, what you want to—if you want to run it after running Bash—you got to type screen. Ah, again, this is because of Bash. There's something going on that it doesn't—it's not taking permission on uh, at, the, at the user. So we got to do sudo again, uh, and then you do screen, which is going to run it as super user. At the password, and then uh, you come to all this information about screen. You just press enter. Now you're in a screen prompt, and now you can do PowerShell. And keep in mind, it's not it's not PowerShell. It, it it will not run. You gotta is case sensitive, so it's PowerShell all in lowercase. Prompt is there. You can do PS version. You see, it's staying there. It's not my my cursor is not jumping. It is out of uh, IntelliSense is working. It's getting information. DIR cancel. Now this is the trick with screen. You can't page up. You can't page up. See, I'm using the mouse roll. I can't page up. What you do is Control A. This game, and let me see, and then you can do up and down on your commands. Uh, do Control A Escape, and then you can do Page Up and Page Out. Control A Escape. Now, clear screen. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to do clear screen. Let me see if this one works. Let's see. Oh, where is my cursor? That didn't work, right? So let me do clear screen. So you see there's there's still little things in here that, that uh, normally with Control L will work. Uh, but in this new version uh, with screen, something did happen to it. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll debugging as, as we go in here. Let's try to break it. So this, that helps. So up to now, screen worked to a point. Uh, the, best, the best way is to use terminal. I'll move this out of the way. This way to use terminal. You can do page up, page down. You know, page up, page down, and you do 
uh, Control L to clear the screen. CLS. That will work too. Clear screen. CLS. Okay, that will work. That's because it's an alias that I of, of the command clear, and I'm going to show you that. Um, so to now looks like the X term is the winner. Uh, so you can work with PowerShell now. If you try clear dash host, I'm sorry for the. Uh, you you, you got to go you got to go into the uh, configuration file of X term in order to give. Um, if I'm not mistaken, and please, uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I know that I was able to add code in the Xterm configuration uh, file in order to make the scroll up and down work. Uh, I, I think there is there must be a uh, a setting for fonts and even screen. So uh, so that's why it's showing yellow in here. Sorry for that for the small size. And what I'm trying to do, I do a clear dash host, which is like partial command line to clear. So whatever is there, then we do it right here. Uh, DIR, and I'm gonna do clear dash host, and it worked. Oh crap! All right. Okay. So, well, X term is the winner. Yeah, if you wanna use uh, to start working with PowerShell, uh, PowerShell in Bash. Uh, in Windows. So yeah. So that's that. That is good to know. I gotta blog about that piece in there now because I was saying that um, a clear host might not work but it is working so that's that's kudos for for the group so when you exit here and uh, this will supposed to be terminate yep there it is it terminated uh, now when you work with aliases you have a couple of things to do and at the user level you have what is called a dot uh, a dot Bash RC. It's like the uh, it's the out exec comment uh, a file for or, or profile for uh, for when you start your session. Anything that's in there is going to load for your profile. Uh, and in order to access that, uh, I think I have something in here. Let me show you. Turn it back to the phone. Yeah, I'm going to go to the aliases. I want to go to the uh, did I type it in here. Uh, there you go. Sudo, gedit, and yeah, squirrely, and there you go for your bash rc. That's the that's the main profile for that user, and we're gonna run it right now here. We're gonna run it right now, bash. And because I know the other one will not work, sudo get it this really slash dot dash rc and this is what will run for when you log in. That this is your user profile. Bash RC, uh, and at the end is where I added a couple of aliases, including the export. This is additional commands that I added. Uh, let me see if I can. So you can see here, I added the the display load local host. If you notice, as soon as I log in, I didn't have to do the ex uh, export display command because I already had it in here so I was a trick <laughs> I was a trick I used for you guys sorry for that uh, yeah and then the clear screen uh, CLS is because I built an alias uh, to the clear command in Linux and then I have another one that I haven't used yet is uh, sudo to start the um, uh, PowerShell uh, we're just gonna do in here let's see what's gonna happen Use this one. Uh, and you're gonna sudo PWS. Happen. That's not gonna work. Then 
that will load PowerShell. And it then gave me that error message because, but, 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 then again, you see, I'm going to type dollar sign, ah, oh, where's my, this is why you want to run PowerShell from uh, just after bash, right? But this is an example, you create an alias to, to run, right? Uh, just like I did for the X terminal, and uh, especially to run X terminal with sudo PowerShell, and it will run the right way. Uh, yeah, so let me just go ahead and uh, work here. This is gonna be nuts. Right. Uh, yeah. So then, this thing I just found. Out. Uh, this command was working before uh, bash. This is just running it from command. I kind of figured out that eventually I could, eventually I could build a PowerShell GUI with some option so I can run a straight bash command to do something. So, and this will be exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, let me. Let me copy this and let me write this. As a matter of fact, I don't think I need the export, but let me give you an example of how you can do a command line straight to a GUI. Okay, uh, let me move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. And let me close this one here. Machine clutter. All right, let's kill this one. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to type that command line. So you do see the possibility here. Uh, and then you press enter, and there it is. Right? So imagine, uh, it's just that this session stays there, right? So imagine I could build maybe uh, an option to, okay, click, click uh, for, for this option in my Windows GUI, and it opens my, my, my Linux GUI. And it's a process, right? So they take another line for a different process and keep building maybe for Firefox. So all well, the possibilities are there. Maybe Chrome, right? I mean, you can do bash Chrome, whatever commands is available now for, for Chrome in Linux. And you can build a Windows GUI to interact with it, you know? So this, this is possibilities are endless. Possibilities are endless. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let me see here. It's one of the use cases that I found about Windows. Yes, it. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is true. That is true. Um, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do have uh, here. I have a Windows version here. This is running the older one, but uh, but yeah, I mean, if you can go here and and okay, my 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 Linux crash in here. So I do lx run uh, slash. Slash full, and this will uninstall the, 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 the whole bash that I had in there. But uh, it, I think this one has to be allocated this one. Bash, let me see. Now, how do, oh, do you see that? Automatically it does an update, uh, but then I can do cat slash. This is all about typing. That's one thing you learn about, about, about Linux. It's everything about typing and building scripts and command. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so they had a, this has a, the, the latest one. So if if I just want to to kill it, then I just do the uh, lx run. And, and that will get rid of it. And then the only thing I need to do is. Uh, I noticed, uh, I heard about the updated version in the blog. So it is, uh, yeah, you got to keep an eye on what's out on the internet so you know there has been some updates. Uh, because uninstalling it and reinstalling it using the command line will not get the latest update. Uh, just when you do the uninstall on, from uh, control panel, from add remove uh, programs on the feature, it will only grab at that time. It will uninstall it completely, and then we'll go to the Windows Store and grab the latest version. Okay, so that's that. that that's the difference. Uh, now, one thing I want to show you is this is my, my Ubuntu. 
remote desktop, as you can see in here. This is the X Ubuntu desktop working right now. And as you can see in here, I can have all my accessories. I turn my, this will go straight into my uh, uh, Ubuntu desktop machine, PowerShell, just to give you a glimpse that, that it is working fine in here. There's no uh, screen cluttering. Uh, I can do it. Pseudo in this case, uh, I can do this version table. And this one I haven't updated yet. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it is. Uh, version 11. It is updated. Um, and I can do R. You can see all my different folders there laid out in my Linux machine. So uh, this, is, this is great. Uh, and uh, if I go to development, I got my Visual Studio in here. Visual Studio code. It takes a little bit to load. And this, I made it work. <laughs> I made it work remote. Okay, so this is this is was uh, this is a very nice. This was very 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 nice. And here I'm running a a uh, uh, couple of Linux. We were trying to see the one that I know. It's a Tinker sample. Okay, this is a Tinker sample. Matter of fact, uh, I'm gonna have my my whole remote uh, maximized now. Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? I want to make sure that you can see the Linux screen. Yes. Okay. So, so this is an example of of a uh, of, uh, Python, right? And uh, I'm I'm very excited because because I mean this is one of the good thing about about Visual Studio Code is that that now you can do any other languages and but at the same time, uh, I don't think I have, I do have something here, let me see. Yeah, I just have to look for it. Uh, yeah, I have maybe on the different in folder and visual code. I want to see something, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, so it didn't let me do that. Oh, folder, yeah. Yeah, I still need to get used to the uh, Visual Studio code, the way it behaves. So I'm here going to open a PowerShell. I'm going to open a PowerShell file. I'm going to work with my SQL Server. And I'm going to do a, where is it? Yes, I have one with Python. There you go. There you go. This is a combination uh, of of uh, PowerShell and Python code in there. So uh, let's see here. Got run code. And uh, the information there. Just share my information out of the script. How about that? Python and PowerShell working together. This is awesome. This is so freaking cool. This is so freaking cool. And that's nothing yet. That's nothing yet. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do a, a, a you know, that uh, the limitations with um, some of the PowerShell good tools, good commands, is like the outgrid view, right? So imagine if you can use Python for the graphic to display the outgrid view. That would be incredible because then, then you can have compatibility between between Windows and other OS because everybody uses Python. I'm using Python as an example, but I mean if it's, but but I know it has this complexity. Okay, it has it complexity. I mean, it's, 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 I've tried to research in it and, and it's hard. Library costs money, you know, so like you, you have to be fully invested in, in order to do some graphical, Python graphical, a graphical piece in order to, okay, let me extract this information and put it in a, in a Windows type, right? So, so this is, this is what is going to come in the future. You know, you can use Ruby. Yes. You can use maybe uh, all the languages. But the thing is, as long those languages are across-platform, 
I don't see why not. But it just, you know, whoever have the skill set of doing this will be the winner. You know, that's that's what I think. Um, so here I, I went a little bit extra here with with, with showing this, but uh, it, it just I'm so freaking excited. You know, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just loving it. Oh, one thing you need to understand when you work in in Linux, and I think in Bash is going to happen again when they fix the security things in it, is that when you build a, a folder, you need to assign security uh, properties to it. Because if not, you won't be able to work with it. Uh, a good example when I created when I created the file, the shell file, uh, to run uh, uh, like to run the extern with PowerShell. You have to use this command: sudo change mode u plus x, and then the path to where the shell is at. Okay, if that's not going to run, it's going to give you uh, I think a permission error. It's going to give you okay. Um, so that that is very important. I mean, for even even the files that that, that you create, maybe you may need to use the uh, uh, for the folder file. We need to do a change mode. 755. This is the part of the Linux, uh, uh, the Linux world that I, I still have to admit I still have to understand more. But but it's it's if you don't do that, you're gonna see you're gonna have you're gonna be frustrated that some script will not gonna run. Okay. Uh, I haven't experienced yet anything with partial that side, but I think it, it, it as I dive into how to use more the scripts and stuff, uh, I'll, I'll see it come. Okay. Uh, the part for the X terminal for the scroll bar to work, I have it here. Uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, the actual link that helped me get to it. This is how you the command line to get to the configuration of X term, and and then below is the code you add. All this block of code that I'm highlighting is what you add in order for. Uh, uh, the up and down scroll to work in Xterm, and kind of makes easier for you to work with with uh, PowerShell now, you know. Uh, so you use Bash to to start your your Windows Linux version in it, and then you use Xterm as your as your application GUI application to work with PowerShell. Uh, editor, ah, uh, this is the trick part. Okay, here we come to the trick part. Trick part, trick part. All right. Uh, well, with this latest version, we saw something happening with with screen within within Bash console. Okay, uh, I was not expecting that, so I don't know what what went wrong in there. Normally, when you press Control A and then Escape, you have access to your page up and down key. Okay, uh, something happened that time. I think it was more when I hit the Control L to clear. Something got messed up there. So right now the best choice is to but the best choice is to use uh, Xterm, right? Uh, additional information uh, I put some links in here. Uh, I can make this file available to you if you want. Uh, I tried I try to work I try to make work the um, to make VS Code to work on Bash, but it didn't work. Many people will tell you you can run. Uh, we're gonna show you now, right? You can do this. I'm going to show you right now what's going to happen. Uh, let me minimize the session here. Uh, let me open Bash. And I do, if I do sudo bash, uh, sudo code to open, Visual Studio is loaded on in, in Bash, okay? But it will not work, and I'll show you how. This is it. It can run as root. Run as root specify alternate user to but it needs to have a normal user in order to open. But then again, uh, if I do code, we're supposed to start Visual Studio Code in Linux in under Bash. It it just it just returns to the prompt and there's no there's no uh, Windows or the application GUI of, of Visual Studio Code open. Uh, if I do top to see what dynamically is running in there, is there. It knows it, it it's it's in there, but the, the GUI is not showing up. And this is a known issue. There's some libraries that 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 is not yet properly configured on the bash to open. So so people may so people may tell you, oh, 
but uh, let me put the screen. What you can do the following. You can do the following. I can do copy paste this, copy paste this line, which you can do with Note Notepad or any other Windows application. You can type this, press enter. And boom, code is open. Yeah, it's a little way to go, Adnan. But then look, but then look, look at this. It, it's code is open, right? But it will not work if you try to create a file on the, the Linux subsystem. You see the file on the Windows uh, Explorer, but when you go into the uh, into your uh, batch uh, subsystem and try to do a DIR, it will not work. You will not see the file. It knows it's a Windows file. It's not a Linux file. So that's that's the big difference there. Work around on that. It's a little lengthy, okay? It's a little lengthy. But one thing that works is go to your OneDrive, store the script you built for it. If you have a script, I'm going to show you a script that I that I, that I built. I have a script that I can, I can use in either Windows and Linux. In this, and this is the very uh, nice part of this. Uh, let's see if I can see it. This is just located. Let's see if I can find it. Okay. So this is a script here. I'm using my 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 number one PowerShell editor, which is Sapiens uh, PowerShell Studio 2016. And this is just because I have a lot of features that that you can speed your, your uh, PowerShell script de development, okay? Uh, in this case, I have get Debian files. Why? Because I have downloaded Debian to my Windows environment in order so I can process them into my uh, Bash environment, right? Uh, we've already learned that, okay, I don't have to do that, but if I download and move it, I can do that. The only thing I cannot do is to the Debian file is open it with a Windows app or it will mess up the file, okay? It will change. It will change the uh, uh, like one of the attributes from Linux uh, from Linux to Windows, and it will not open in Linux. Okay, um, so and basically, this is because we have a global variable name is window or is Linux. It's already available. Uh, let me open one of the windows in here. Here's Windows PowerShell. If I do get dash Variable. You see, we have PS Edition, and but we don't have anything like is window or is Linux, right? But now, if I open, if I open my PowerShell core, and I do get dash bar. Now we have now we have something that can help identify what system we're, uh, we are running the script at. So, so in this case, I can run this this script to get a list of my Debian packages to see if it's Linux, go to this particular, uh, okay, I hard coded to my own name, but we can we can automate that to be more streamlined, right? Uh, that, uh, I'm hard coding my name in there, but you could you could be more 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 effective, right? But but just to uh, uh, demo purpose, this is the path to my Debian's uh, uh, file that I stored before installation or that has been installed in Linux, and this is and this is the Windows directory where my Debian file has been stored. On my Windows side, so you will run this. You can run the script, this function, on either of Windows and Linux, just to give you a heads up of the possibilities. You know, uh, so there, there there will be a lot a lot more things to come. Of course, unfortunately, keep in mind if I save the fi this file under my Bash direct subdirectory uh, Linux directory, it will not be it, it, it's not viewable. It will not be viewed under under Bash. You, you gotta you gotta you gotta save it in example you can save it off your system somewhere in this case I use OneDrive 
and have from my Linux machine access that folder on my OneDrive and download it back to my to my Linux folder and it will work. It's a little bit of a up and down, it's not, but but it is possible and it works. Okay, it is possible, but it, but it will work. So, uh, I think I got everything here. Yeah. Where am I here? Okay, let me see. Uh, oh yeah, um, warning on on the um, on the new bash of the updated bash is when you run PowerShell the first time at the console without sudo, right? Without sudo, it will give you an error. Uh, like the, uh, the, the folder does not exist or something for your profile. And the module folder does not exist. It, it's not accessible. Uh, a workaround was to run this, but I mean, it's just, it, it, it's not, I mean, it, 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 it is a bug. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's a bash bug or it's a win. I think it's more a bash bug because there, that was the latest thing that was, it was changed from version 1404 to 1601. So, so I guess I got everything covered here. Um, and this is an example of any definition and how to run uh, straight from the from the command line. Uh, yeah, I guess um, I guess I guess yeah. This we can save this. Save this. Well, guys, you have any any. Uh, any question? Feel free to use the mic. No, I, I, uh, I like what I see. It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, and this is just to get you started, you know. And that, that now, now it's just a matter. Uh, I'm trying to do this in a in a progression, you know. In, in uh, uh, you know, everything is about setting up your environment to work and then after that okay what are the possibilities and what what you can do uh, uh, as a matter of fact uh, let, let me uh, uh, let me just do the closing statement don't go away okay all right guys well really appreciate your time and being here and and um uh, and uh, this is all what i got but uh keep 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 an eye on this it will be more more to come okay and uh and, uh, uh, and I'm very excited. If you have any questions? I have my email address. Uh, let me see if I can put them in here. Uh, and there you go. So feel free to contact me, and uh, I'll see you in the next meeting. Thank you. Okay, let me stop the recording.